should be there. Yeah. Okay, figured that out. All right, cool. Good, thanks. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening. Um, today's session, office hour number 52, is all about CSTM 4.0. And we have with us Mark Bodman, who is the subject matter expert in this area. He is the senior product manager of CSTM CMDB, and he used to be the APM PM, and he also participates in the IT for IT forum. So I, I also see we have a good crowd here today. So Mark, without further ado, the floor is yours. Great, thank you very much. Sure. Um, yeah, and we also have Daron here, who is the APM product manager now. So, uh, uh, so this is uh, great. He, he can answer additional questions that come up around APM. Yeah, and uh, all the participants, as you, uh, as Mark is going through the slides, if you have any question, please feel free to put it in the chat window. Uh, either Daron or I will try to answer them. Thank you, Mark. Please start. Great. Uh, okay, so um, just to give you a little background, the, the CSDM is a is a model that we use to ma manage the information in our platform, and it kind of extends on the CMDB. Uh, and whether you know it or not, you're you're using it when you're using our products these days. Um, a little bit of a safe harbor statement. I may also mention a number of product areas that we're investing in in the future. So don't make your buying decisions based on any futures. Um, this is a very large presentation that we're only going to get into a portion of all of the, the content here. I'm going to provide links to the content that's already recorded out there that you know, we don't have time to cover today. And I want this to be more interactive as well as we get into it. But I wanted to start with this perspective because what we have is the, the, the common service data model is all about providing a common model for all the products and all the BUs that we uh, have on the, on the platform. So it's not there for its own good. It's there to help each product realize value more effectively, more efficiently. And this is just a nice overview that I like to use to kind of single out what that value is in each of the areas of the platform. Um, so this, it does say CMDB, but the actual seem to be here is a little bit more than just infrastructure, which is the legacy seem to be. It is it's more it, it's more into the what we call service graph. And that's that's a good way to think about the common data model is really it's a broader model than just infrastructure. And we'll kind of highlight that in a minute. And uh, this is just another overview of that dependency on that seem to be in service graph perspective. Uh, things like asset management is very hardware and software uh, focused, but APM is a bit higher level in the, uh, in, the, in the conceptual area of planning. So before things are actually built or to be able to aggregate information when you're doing planning, there's a key, you can't really look at the server level detail in APM. You're, you're looking at a portfolio of apps that you think you have and that you want to invest in or need to have in the future. But you can see there's a lot of other areas that we've invested in here too, and that use this model or contribute to it in various ways. Uh, the big one that we're, we're seeing a lot of interest in and a lot of uh, new functionality is in CI CD pipelines and ops teams to this. So after you plan on investing in an application, for example, the teams kick off and they build something and that we wanna maintain that traceability through this model. And then of course, once it's actually built, it, it's deployed maybe, or it's being used, you know, managed operationally uh, and providing services to your, to your consumers. It all kind of connects, which is how I look at the whole model. So the CSDM model is really in life cycle management of digital products and services. Uh, it doesn't say business applications here because business applications is really just another type of digital product that you take software and hardware, you run it in your data center, cloud data center, and you provide services. So we wanna be able to understand sort of the traceability between what's being planned on, how it's being developed, how, you're pro how it's being managed operationally and how it's providing that service. And it's all connected and supported by what we call the service graph and CSDM is really that guidance. It's the model that 
prescribes how do we connect all these dots? How do business applications that are more conceptual in nature for planning purposes, how do they connect to what's being built, deployed, and then what, what kind of service are they providing? So this is a key element of our platform and how we maximize the value of a shared model in this case. Um, the one thing that I also want to, to harp on is that in the CSDM, we focus on the common bits of the data model. We don't try to encompass everything in the platform. We have hundreds, thousands really of uh, tables. And so we are focused on what's actually being managed across the board uh, and shared what's common across many products. So over time, we evolve CSDM in order to add those new common elements. And so you'll see it grow and change over time. And uh, we also have products that don't use common elements today that are transforming their free factoring to leverage the CSDM. So that's something to keep in mind. The good thing is that um, just going back a little bit historically, uh, when I was representing APM, I built it to leverage a lot of the common model. And, and this was one of my core principles when I was thinking about the design of APM originally, and we continue to do this. We kind of adopted that same philosophy across the board here. And that's thus the CSDM was really born out of that, that ideal of, of leveraging that common da data and getting everybody to, to subscribe to that internally, all the different product managers. Uh, that was the intent of this particular investment in creating CSDM in the very beginning. And to explain what CSDM is uh, and the different domains, when we talk about CSDM domains, we have the design domain, the build domain, managed and consumed domain. And this is where we separate the concerns from planning activities versus build activities. And, and the, of course, the separation of concerns is different elements of the model, different levels of detail. Uh, operations concerns are here. This is where ITOM and ITM kind of sit. And then down here, service management concerns. Uh, I would say historically, when these are all separate products, you may have copied data from one to the other. I, a common thing that I've seen in the past is copying information from app portfolios into the service portfolio. Uh, because we're on the same platform, that doesn't make sense anymore. So a big part of this model is to support the activities, but do it together so that we do understand how these things are related. And on top of everything uh, is the foundations domain. And the foundations domain for us is gonna be shared elements of the model, such as location hierarchy, where are the people that are doing the development? Where are your customer consumers that are doing, uh, providing service for? Where is the hardware and software deployed in the data center? So location is common across uh, many use cases, many of the areas of the model within our platform. So that is foundational when you see that area. As we get into um, the, the definition, the one thing that I want to kind of keep in mind too is that we have a number of principles that we established when forming CSDM. The first thing is we wanted to simplify the concepts in the model because a lot of folks didn't understand what they were. We didn't have definitions. We actually agreed on the definitions that we provide um, and we use internally across the product teams. We also, uh, all of those tables that are common and are now out of the box. So if, if they are common, you don't have to install a product that you may not own. Uh, we want you to use the right tables, even if you don't use the products for those tables uh, immediately. Um, we also have focused a lot lately on data governance processes and APM does take part in some of those just from a conceptual point of view by introducing a, a process to create new applications. You don't want people to willy-nilly uh, add them to the portfolio without going so through some level of governance to just make sure the names conventions are, are in, the, in the description are being um, adhered to based on your standards. Um, and other things here, of course, are also matter, but yeah, these are the important ones to me uh, and, and really the ones that kind of help get this moving in the right direction. Um, we've been at it for quite some time as well. So I just wanted to kind of go way, all the way back to Kingston is when we started to making, making decisions about putting some of our 
uh, our key elements out of the box, making sure that we were providing those. And we continue to make changes all the way up to here. And CSDM has evolved along the way. We we're up to CSDM version four, which came out just after, after our Rome release. I'll explain kind of why there's, there's a bit of a disconnect between the releases and the versions of CSDM because it is guidance and we, we don't necessarily tie to a specific release. Uh, but a lot of times the products uh, need to be able to use that guidance or to be able to introduce a new element of the model, those products need to support it. So there is some, there's some consideration for the release cadence as well. And uh, I'm assuming some people here may already know a little bit about CSDM. So for the, for the folks that are already educated and sort of know what CSDM is all about up to version three, uh, this is just a quick understanding of different things that we've added along the way and how we've changed our product to be able to support or uh, extend CSDM. Um, as we go back in, in time, we, we basically have a number of things that we've done over the different releases. The, the version four changes that we made in Rome and all the way through San Diego are really adding this new build domain in between business applications and application services. Now, this build domain and the SDLC components within it are purely optional. And I'm really, um, I, I'm very happy that the APM team actually has added this as a capability to support some of the APM use cases, especially in TPM, Technology Portfolio Management. So you can use the, uh, the business application analysis down into the underlying technology by looking at um, the SDLC component or bypassing it, which most customers are doing today. But the SDLC component was added because we have teams that are building new capabilities, uh, microservices, or delivering config files that will eventually uh, configure what's actually deployed either in hardware and software. And so we are extending some of our policy checks into this development domain where things are being managed either in artifact repositories or social code repositories and structure that's used and managed here like microservices structures will basically inform or be mirrored on what's deployed in each app service. So the build domain is uh, currently not used uh, by a lot of different products, but a number of product areas like uh, Lightstep integrations, uh, De DevOps, our agile products are all going to start using the SDLC component much more readily, much more heavily. And the DevOps config uh, is, is the first one to represent what we call a config file here so that we understand that we are meeting those policies when we deploy these config files. Um, so, th so that's there. It's purely optional. I do have a lot of customers that tend to want to use this for a number of different use cases. Uh, um, the one that I, I found from an APM perspective that many organizations want to use is for APIs to be able to describe APIs that are being provided by those build teams or a third party application you're deploying and be able to manage those, uh, those integrations. So I think you might see some functionality in the future to address that from an APM perspective. The other thing that we added recently is the business process in CSDM version four. The business process has been there for a long time, but we never really had it as a common element of the model, which is to say what products use it and how do they use it. So it was added in an order to support business continuity management, DCM, DR testing and, and management, risk, GRC, and also RPA, robotic process automation. So processes are, are now a, a key part across multiple products we sell. And so you'll see a much more, I would say, aggressive use of this object and more prescriptive use of it with those product areas. The other thing that we added is a common lifecycle definition. And those life cycles were actually added back in the Paris release, but we never really made a big deal about it. We didn't highlight those. Uh, until CSDM version four. The reason for that is because over time, all our products that we sell are gonna start using the new lifecycle definitions, which are a base element of the model. Previously, different, different areas of the model had different ways of articulating lifecycle. So what you had here in the design stage 
life cycles were very different than what we track down here with server hardware and software. And there's no easy way to report or synchronize that information. So if you made a decision in APM, for example, to retire something that's already there, how do you synchronize that decision with the life cycles that are so, uh, uh, in the deployments of that applica business application? So we're, we're trying to get everybody on the same page with regards to life cycle. And there are some functionalities that we implemented to migrate old to new life cycles uh, and synchronize those while folks re-architect re or retool the products that we sell or leverage those life cycles. Another thing we added was location types. This location hierarchy is important for a lot of different use cases. And whether it's where the data, you know, what data center, what rack and elevation the hardware is in, or what continent maybe a business consumer is in when they're coming in for services. So now we've added a location type so that we can appropriately leverage the locations and filter them just for the use cases that are specific to the use to the areas of the model that you're looking at and also uh, populating. And the last big part was technical services is now part of the service portfolio. Previously, the technical services that we had in the, in the platform were pretty much isolated to event management use cases. And we weren't using those technical services in the portfolio management of the, the services alongside business services. So this brings the two worlds of managing basically the infrastructure and backend, what I would call shared IT services, in line with business services where you have end consumers to deal with. This is a big step along the way to what I call product centricity. Product models is another thing that we've had in the platform now for a while, but we're starting to leverage these in a much more holistic way. Uh, some organizations are shifting to what we call product centric ways of managing IT. So product models are, are going to help and facilitate that and also bringing the technical service in line with the business service helps to collapse the, the, the portfolio management of uh, digital products and services into one portfolio. Another product that we released uh, that, does, uh, that goes a step further in this whole exercise is it brings the business applications together with the business services and technical services as well. The, the reason for this is because we're seeing teams manage uh, everything. They manage both the business applications and the business and or technical services related to it. So to be able to facilitate that full life cycle, the fact that the team has control over their their design and planning and development activities, but also operations activities down below. So that can now be facilitated by digital portfolio management. Uh, so the other thing I also wanted to mention, many organizations have taken a step to rename their business applications to products or digital products. So um, they, they already treat their applications like products in that in that notion of a full life cycle and uh, they do synchronize those with the services that they're providing uh, as a result of investing in those digital products so there's another thing that I, I typically see with a lot of with some of the IPM customers that are a little bit further ahead on that product thinking the way of thinking about uh, digital products So I've been talking a lot and I haven't really looked at any questions. Um, I'm looking at the chat. I don't see anything yet here, but I wanted to take a quick pause and uh, see if anybody did have a question that, that, uh, that we can answer before we move on. All right, no questions, great. So I'll continue. Um, in CSDM, so this is a, a, a larger view of that particular, of the framework. So you can get an idea of all the different things that you see when we're talking about CSDM, there's a number of components that we see on this map. The, the key thing here to think about is that the four domains are really there to, to manage the data from these activities. Uh, and so each one, the data elements that are there are specific to the products and the activities that are called out. Along the sides, you'll see personas. These aren't actual roles in every case. So application owner, you can say there's application owners for APM, but there's actually two. There's a business and an IT, and many organizations may extend that into additional owner types. 
Um, Teams, the same thing. Teams is a bit different. We are migrating to more of a team-centric way of managing things. And the app owner would be one of the people on the team or, or product owner or service owner. So these are all different positions to play on teams, more like a team sport. So we are migrating to this team concept in order to be able to say, I'm on the team that manages the full life cycle of XYZ digital product or business app or business service. So we want to be able to collapse some of the, the model to be able to understand this, but also how we're managing and describing the teams that are involved. So hi, is there a question? Okay, there was no question. Um, so that's something to keep in mind when you see this Teams concept, you'll start seeing a consolidation of Teams that are across the board. And we did release some capability in our in our Rome release to be able to describe these Teams, which are basically a, a, a list, a related list of different groups, basically, is how you want to think about it today. So, but uh, that, of course, is, is one related list that can be associated with a specific entity like a business app or a business service. The um, other key personas that you'll see is technology owners over here, technology service owners, um, app service owners that are basically the uh, 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 platforms or behind the scenes. And down here you'll on the right hand side, you'll see personas like this, the service owner. Now the service owner is sort of the center here because the service owner provides whatever the investment was to end consumers. And uh, this is an area that we're looking at migrating eventually to what we call a product owner. And a, pro uh, a product could be a, an application uh, and or a service, a, a device. So as we evolve the model in the future beyond 4.0, uh, we're moving towards this product-centric way of thinking and then making what we're managing a little bit more generic and suitable for what it is that, that you're actually creating and managing. So uh, you'll see some of that in, in some of the later slides. So product centricity is a big deal going forward. And I just want to kind of pause here. Are, are the folks on the phone, are, is anybody going through that journey or looking at product centricity as one of the key transformation initiatives that you're going through? Just curious. Uh, yes, at Trinity Health, we are going through that right now too. We've gone to a product centric model. Okay. Anybody else going through that, looking at that? No. Well, if you're afraid to speak up, I mean, uh, we can kind of talk offline at some point about the view. But this is this is one of the things that uh, we're, we're seeing. It kind of started from the DevOps perspective, where we have uh, a, the, the team, the DevOps team that does own the full lifecycle. And there, there are some conflicts or maybe some challenges in integrating that model with uh, what, what happens really at that portfolio level or in classic IT service management. So in a way, we're gonna be merging these worlds together on the platform. And uh, a big part of that is going to be the business applications and services kind of coming together. Uh, so I would l definitely look at DPM as, a, as one of the first big steps that we're, we're taking in that, in that context. And uh, some of these other changes will start falling into place as you uh, migrate and as we migrate to that, to that way of thinking as well. Okay, so the other things that I wanted to kind of cover here from a CSDM perspective are some of the uh, examples. So when we're looking at the CSDM model, we have different patterns. I call them patterns in which to document business applications and all their things within the platform to address all the different concerns in each of those different areas. And so platforms is kind of an easy one to kind of start with because we do have ServiceNow as, as the key one. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to pick on APM a little bit just because there is a very specific way of managing platform hosts that are app, type business applications versus platform apps. And what you have is uh, like the mid server is neither, but it, I just put it in here uh, to, to, just for, to, for including it. Um, but the ServiceNow platform is an application, business application that supports other applications that are built upon it. Uh, and it's different than let's say a uh, a platform like uh, Salesforce or uh, SharePoint can be thought of as a platform. So these different platforms are 
supporting and constructing different applications for different purposes on those particular platforms. This is kind of important to leverage this architecture type in order to distinguish one from the other. And there's some nice functionality within the APM product to be able to support that. Now, once those platforms from a planning perspective uh, and ownership perspective are identified. So think about these are, uh, you have a different owner of the platform versus the modules on the platform. They serve different purposes. And uh, when we deploy these and, and recognize how they're deployed, we have a platform instance that recognized here for each of the prod and non-prod environments. So here's a application service in order to represent each of the deployments in, a not, in those environments. And then we also have an application service dependency on that particular platform to represent each of the business apps that are deployed on the platform in those environments. Why this is important is to support operational use cases. So for example, if the platform happens to have a problem, everything on the platform, if you have multiple products that are actually on that platform providing different functionality, each one of those products, basically, you can understand that there's, a, there's an impact. Likewise, if only people are calling in on one product on the platform, but everything else that you actually host on that platform seems to be okay, then you can direct the ticket to the right team and isolate the problem to this product that's on the platform, not the platform itself. So operationally, this is important to be able to distinguish uh, and also assign resources from a help desk perspective, or even a third party vendor like ourselves, if the pro platform has an issue, or do you need to talk to a, uh, a team that specializes on the products on the platform? So these are the operational context down here. This is really where we're managing the, the technology ap after it's been deployed and as it's used. Some components, like I said, are deployed in the data center. And uh, this is not a platform app, it's just deployed in the data center. And it's a typical app where you have uh, an underlying piece of infrastructure and applications running on that infrastructure, which then are part of the app service. So this is uh, the, the, what I would call the typical on-prem model for this. And uh, this, these would be SaaS, this is a SaaS model. And I have a lot of questions from customers that say, do we need to create application services for SaaS? Sure, because you have different support groups for that. You do have different metrics and reporting that you perform and a different cost and a different way of making that available to your consumers. So even when it's a SaaS application, such as ServiceNow, which is all in the cloud, you still have the application services to be able to distinguish each of the environments, the spend, and also be able to monitor and manage expectations from a support perspective. Each of these can also be related to product models, software product models, uh, obviously in this case, or hardware product models in the case of infrastructure. So product models is not a, a, what I would say a, a large part of what's used across the platform. We use this information in an APM context because we're able to aggregate all of the different software product models and hardware product models used underneath a particular business app. And then of course, relay that information back to the app owner in order to evaluate risks of any of this, these specific hardware or software being used. Um, that particular use case is pretty powerful. And we, we need to understand the product models in each case and the end of life, end of support dates for, for them to be able to evaluate that risk. In a way, APM was leading the way in terms of leveraging what I would call a large swath of the CSDM model in order to perform more sophisticated analysis like TPM risk calculations. Can I ask um, a question? Sure, sure thing. Yeah, so I understand having application services to help identify different support groups for the technical components, but if there's one team that manages the whole ServiceNow platform, um, would you still recommend breaking it out by platform application and separate application services for each module? Um, I would for a couple of different reasons. One is because we license and we charge you for, for these modules, okay? So, so what, you're, what you're being charged for, what you're paying us to provide you is going to have a different cost model. And you know, you, if, you char if you turn on more stuff, there'll be more uh, things on ServiceNow, which you're using. Uh, what I find is a lot of organizations from an APM perspective, 
are moving towards a platform architecture, they, which means to say they don't want standalone apps, right? They don't want to they don't want to manage many standalone apps. They want to have one platform with a bunch of apps on them so that they limit the, the risk. They maximize their investment in the platform. Uh, so this gives you some granularity in order to take that measurement. The other things that I also wanted to kind of point out is the, the business apps on the platform provide very different capabilities. So when you're looking at investing or optimizing what you do in each capability from a strategic pl planning perspective, you have this level of detail. If you didn't ever, it would look like everything is on service now, but how do you break this out from a cost perspective, right? Or a roadmap perspective, like change management here at ServiceNow doesn't change very often, but HR is fairly new. So there's maybe some risk in using some of the newer products uh, before they're mature versus something that's a little bit more mature. So those conversations are basically for different areas of your business. And they're also have different consequences for use or non-use. That makes sense? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I built out the model a little bit further to also illustrate the uh, business service aspects, okay? So the, the services that are provided are based on the application services that they're using, not the platform. Same problem here is do I call the platform owner who may not know much about how HR pro the HR product works but typically we wanna have some expert that's responsible for the HR product area who's providing that product, right? And then of course, all the consumers come in, they can be directed to the right support group that knows HR, not just the platform as a whole. So, so yeah, the support groups and the supportability of the platform versus the apps on the platform, especially in larger organizations where they have uh, a, you know, a much larger team, a much, much, I would say a lot more products that are on the platform that are being used, Th this model works best. Um, and we also see some customers that develop their own products on the platform. So they are developers and they have a lot of custom things that they actually develop as well. So onboarding new products that are on, this, on the platform, you need to take care in this as well. And also understand sort of the purpose of those from a consumption point of view from a service point of view. Okay. So um, I hope this helps. I mean, this is just one example of a number of them that we have. I do have, uh, uh, like I said, a lot of this stuff is recorded in material that I can send links on later. But once you see how the APM context fits in with the rest, you can see now where uh, there's some synergies. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to also mention, and this is not maybe obvious for, for folks that are more focused on the APM side of the house, is there's linkage between the business capability and the offering. Why that's kind of in, important is because when you invest in an application, um, it is there, this is more or less the investment path, which means the business application, uh, the team that basically supports this are the ones that are going to be providing services to the rest of the org. So the investment path is really coming down from that capability perspective. The actual use of those applications, however, come up through this, this side. And now that we have the business service uh, uh, and the offerings that are connected back to the, the capability, we have a feedback loop. If you have a lot of tickets, for example, uh, people are reporting lots of tickets with onboarding. Um, onboarding uses the app service down here, this production environment which kind of come back to here. So that feedback loop from a business application point of view is pretty straightforward. And also the understanding the purpose for that particular business app and the consumers of it, we have that, that full traceability back uh, to the capabilities. So something to keep in mind, what I, what I have found is for example, this is pretty straightforward and this is usually done from a application portfolio management perspective, uh, alignment workspace uses this. Uh, but when it comes to the service feedback, it's a bit disconnected today without this particular perspective. We also have different portfolios of business applications versus portfolios of services. Um, in DPM, we're starting to collapse that. 
we have enterprise portfolios, which is now a superset of the two. So something to keep in mind as we bring these two worlds together, uh, the application and the services together, uh, this is just a little bit of piece of, uh, of how we're bringing it together, at least in CSDM now. So any questions about this? I appreciate the questions because it, 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 this is way beyond, of course, the APM use cases, but it, it has it gives you insight on where we're going and why, especially when we go back to the earlier portions of the of, of the presentation where we're talking about the full life cycle. Okay. Okay. So um, a couple other patterns. I just want to do one more real quick. That's really common, and I'll talk about what what's going to come next. Uh, one is a microservices pattern. Some business applications are quite large and there are different modules or microservices that are implemented underneath the, the hood. Um, I'm using an online sales management uh, as a particular example in this case, where we have uh, a large website that may be broken into different modules that perform different activities underneath the covers. Uh, each of those modules that are stood up are microservices have different code associated to them. So this one calculates taxes for the sale, where this one does, deals with currency conversion. So all of them are, are basically used in the context of the overall uh, online sales management application, but you may have different teams, you have different software, different kind of costs uh, for each of those mo you know, microservices. And you can upgrade one without having to upgrade the other. So you can upgrade your tax tax calculation with the newer tax rules, you know, because those, those change from time to time and not have to change anything else. You're, so you're isolating sort of the impact to the other functionalities and you're able to uh, have teams up upgrade pieces of the app without the whole thing having to be impacted. So microservices patterns are becoming much more prevalent and we don't really, I have some customers that do wanna articulate those in the business application tier, but it's not really appropriate because they are managed as a whole, even though they're different modules underneath the hood, the users aren't exposed to those different modules. They don't know any better and you invest in it as a whole, right? So the, the whole sales application has to work. Even if there's a problem with one module or another, that's more for troubleshooting and isolating problems, but the customers don't care. They don't care if you have multiple modules underneath the hood or not. They just want their order to be placed. So just keep in mind that, 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 that you can decompose your business applications into these application services that are here. In the future, we'll be also looking at the SDLC component to assign teams that are building these particular microservices. So moving into that whole DevOps or agile methodology uh, in that red area, that build area that we, we walked through in the beginning. Um, and then when you're dealing with, of course, uh, activities like business services and uh, online ordering, uh, this is the overall service, regardless of the number of microservices below it. Uh, of course, if, if one of the modules is down, the service might be degraded, or you might have to delay the order intake process until the module is up. So there may be some queuing or some, some uh, uh, compensation processes. So, you, so that, of course, can be uh, uh, taken care of in the architecture of the system. And you can also start messaging degradation based on one of the modules being down. And you know we can't place all the orders because the tax calc is down or the, maybe the currency conversion for one of the countries with support is down. So, uh, so this is a, just another uh, example that I wanted to take you through. Any, any questions or on, on this? One quick question. Sure. Um, how do you how do you configure it within the CMDB the references that you have indicated here? So I, I know how to do the relationships, but is how do you build that out? So these references are built out in, in a number of ways. Um, the, and it's there are function, features and functionalities that we've introduced that you may or may not be aware of at this point. Um, one of them is uh, there's a product called SRO, Site Reliability Operations, and that that establishes this reference here that I'm talking about. So as you introduce another microservice, 
and, and it's set up for those DevOps teams that basically are controlling their destiny to set these up. Um, they can actually create them or destroy them based on their release process. Okay. So that's, that's one method that we see. The other method is that we do have a application service wizard that's part of the CSDM navigation. When you go to CSDM and you look at the app service inventory, you can say, I'm adding a new app service, define its parent. So we, 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 we have a similar mechanism when you define the parent and defining the, the relationship from that point of view. Oh, great. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and the last one, which is a little bit more of an advanced use case is through APIs and automation. What we're finding is um, CI CD pipelines that are used to deploy these applications in an automated fashion. So as the organization that manages this app, as the dev team manages that app, create a new module that needs to be deployed, their CI CD pipeline will can automatically create the, the, the additional module, the additional app service uh, through APIs and command lines. We added that uh, fairly recently in, in Rome as well. So uh, we can use Puppet Chef or even command line scripts to be able to, uh, to do this work as well. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? I appreciate the interaction, by the way. All right. So I'm going to take you to what I call, what we're calling the now data model. And this is going to be a little bit in the future. I, I wanted to give you an idea on what's next and how, what we're thinking of next as we bring this all to light. What we have, um, we, what we talked about so far is really this idea of, of digital products uh, being used here. Uh, there's a there's a synergy with the business service, but they're typically, you know, before service now, you might have bought different products to manage the app portfolio versus define the service portfolio. Within our platform, we're all together. And what I find is that for, for business apps anyway, the business service definitions are almost the same. And this is confusing and it provides, uh, folks are gonna have to do more work to be able to define both of them because now they're both on the same platform. Why am I having to articulate the same kind of information here in the service portfolio that I'm actually articulating here in the app portfolio? So as we bring those worlds together, we're, we're looking at something called the now data model and evolving CSDM in order to address this more holistically. So this is, a, again, this is something that's a, a few, probably two years out, but I wanted to give you some insight on where we're going with all this. And um, it might be a little bit of a shock for folks that uh, you know um, do APM today, but you'll see how it works in the future uh, as we go. Um, the first thing I want to kind of take, draw your attention to is digital. When you see digital products, okay, we're talking about a, an application, a uh, hardware device, a, a service, or software, okay? Um, and so digital product models that we're going to be supporting are going to kind of be variable based on what it is you're, you're managing. And I, I've taken some liberty to change out everywhere you see uh, business service, technical service, or business application to a digital product. Why this is important is that from a design and investment point of view, what we're finding is companies that are creating products that ship to customers, you know, IT is involved, or these digital products are used in the factory, or yeah, they're not just back office anymore. IT is involved in, in a lot of things. And what we mean by an application doesn't fit the mold, you know, using this name business application doesn't fit the mold, for example, if you're a hospital, for the carts that you roll around in the hospital to perform work, you know, from a, from a capability perspective. So, so the, the business application has kind of run its course in terms of uh, being a, a way of defining any kinds of digital products that you're creating and, and meeting sort of all of these different scenarios. So, uh, so that's the big change that we've kind of introduced here so that we're more generic. The, the, the main thing that we do wanna to continue to support is some of these digital products that you have are technologies that are pure hardware that are being managed or backend systems like LDAP or batch services that are being managed that are focused on technology consumers inside 
teams that are building things using these technologies, okay? Likewise, over here, we'd still have services being offered and, uh, but there's a synergy now. We can kind of take that application name and, and preserve it all the way to here. To, this, this is the app I'm using. This is the service that I'm, I'm expecting from it. And I can actually have synergy there. We're also introduced this idea of cons customers, products sold and whatever is installed to support them. Um, those have an impact to what you're managing in IT uh, directly through um, the infrastructure that, that, you're, that you're managing in the data center or uh, application services that are hosted. And you'll notice that we also changed the name of app service to system. I find a lot of customers just can't understand the name application service. When you say application service, we kind of lose them. Um, we always sometimes explain this as an instance of an application because you remember up here, we had a business app. These are each of the prod and non-prod you know, instances. But more generically, what we're talking about is a system that is a, a decomposed of uh, software and hardware, you know, going through the network devices. And this, th these are all configured to work together. And systems depend on one another. So, um, and, and you have other systems that might depend on you. So thinking about this as a system or in a system design is a little bit more conducive to the future when we're dealing with a, uh, a broader set of things that are consumed by, by customers or these dependencies internally that we have that aren't easy to understand. So by simplifying this model, by simplifying our language to system, it becomes easier to understand what we're talking about. Um, so those are the big changes that we have in mind. We're also looking at how do we align uh, other areas of the, the model, like stories are specific to a component that's being uh, delivered that a team might, might articulate. We have epics and features for products that are going to be built and funded and uh, by those teams. So once the funding happens uh, from a, based on a demand um, or an idea that comes in. So the ideation is an area that we wanna also support because ideas can come from customers, uh, internal business partners, or even you know um, the product managers themselves as they look at the market. Um, so th this is a, a, a kind of a next step iteration thought process on where we're going. Uh, in the middle, you'll see that we also are looking at product owner, system owner, product will include, of course, the application uh, and service today, but who, what about the folks that own the hardware devices and just software de de developed? So the, this will address more a broader set of ownership uh, and also that whole full life cycle management to you know, preserve what we're talking about throughout that life cycle. So a little bit future oriented, I know, but it is still something that you wanna keep in mind as we continue to evolve or use APM, it, it, you can start looking at how do I take these business apps and, uh, and still, still plan, still look at that, but how do I incorporate things that are hardware that don't really fit the mold uh, or maybe um, deliver things to customers that don't really fit the mold for, for uh, business applications. So just wanted to pause there. Any, any questions at this point? Maybe a, maybe a little bit much to, to uh, internalize, but uh, just giving you some insight on where we're going next. All right. Well, and I, um, from a time perspective, what do we have left? Just want to do a quick time we check. We have eight minutes left, Mark. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to leave you with this just to give you an idea where we're going. And uh, just keep in mind, this is going to be probably about two years out before you see this become reality. There's a lot of products that we sell that are, uh, that are part of the story that need to be brought forward. Um, new products like DPM are sort of a, a tip of the iceberg. Um, and, uh, but it gives you an idea where we're going. So I want to open up for any other questions. If you came in here and you didn't see a question uh, get answered that you wanted to know about, understanding about CSDM and, and how that works, um, um, is there anything else that you guys have? Uh, uh, okay. Or maybe some feedback 
or something that you would like to see in future and you would like to share, this is your chance. Okay. Can I, um, can I ask mm -hmm. you about the, the customer part of this and your service portfolio um, area? Uh, that can be used today, right? With, uh, to determine, We've got some crazy work around that we, you know, say this this uh, business unit, if you will, is is using this product, and we and it um, it gets really crazy for us as we get into uh, mergers and acquisitions and how to, you know, get rid of that. And I'd like to see how to leverage that, perhaps a little better, to mm. uh, maybe using the service portfolio to say here are our current customers here's here's what this you know if somebody said this site you know this site needs to be divested what mm -hmm. are they using um, is that um, cuz we've just completely avoided that green square to be honest um, yeah. is that the proper way to do that uh, yeah there there's multiple ways right now in the in the uh, let me go back to a current picture of AP, uh, of a CSDM to have that conversation. This is a little yeah, bit too muddy. Um, yeah. yeah. So what you what you'll find right now is you have a portfolio of business applications. So you have a portfolio construct here. You have a portfolio mm -hmm. construct here, which is different, and you also have portfolios um, for projects. You know, so so we have different portfolios that are created, which are basically hierarchies to understand, you know, how how to organize the things that we're talking about. That that's been some some of the challenge because a lot of the M and A work that I've I've really worked on is around the business capability or the portfolio rationalization here, independent of the service portfolio here. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. what you what what this gives you is understanding your consumer and. To be frank, not a lot of customers have broken that out. There's a functionality called subscribers that are part of this service offering. And the subscribers can be a location that subscribes to a business service offering, a group of people, a specific set of users, or even a, um, a department uh, or company. So the different subscribers that are here gives you who's actually using something you know, as you, as you analyze that. It's not connected to the business application directly or this hierarchy up there. It's connected to this hierarchy of business service portfolio. And that's been some of the challenge. Um, as you rationalize, you're having to set up different portfolios to rationalize different pieces of the, of the picture. You know, um, It's not very efficient, not easy to manage. Uh, where we want to go is, is if you look at DPM, I suggest looking at DPM as a, a picture of the future. DPM has uh, two portfolio constructs. One, it's called enterprise portfolios. This is sort of that future where we start bringing these together. And one mm -hmm. is called personal portfolios. And the personal portfolios might say, I'm a service owner or I'm a app owner of something. I just want these apps in there or these services together. This personal portfolios is, is, um, is not the one, but these enterprise portfolios, I would say, might be a good step in that direction to kind of bring those worlds together. Because that's where you bring the app and the business service together in one portfolio construct. This is interesting. I think we're using some uh, crazy workarounds to, to do that very same thing. We've got, you know, you know what, call it business unit. Uh, what business unit is this being uh, used in? And if there's one, I'm calling it local. If there's you know more than one, I'm calling it regional. But if we just leave it blank, it's it's enterprise, and so it's uh, yeah, uh, it, it's it, not quite clean right now. <laughs> well, that, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. So a lot of folks try to match up the business application to the the department for rationalization of this. Meanwhile, these services are being defined with subscribers that also point to this, and they may not match, right? Um, they're, they're, they're not equal. And that's been the problem. When you go rationalization here, it, it may not reflect reality down here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, you're, you're on this. You, you, I think you're thinking about the problem in the right way. You're seeing it, you're experiencing it. We have a vision on how we collapse this so that it is more effective and efficient. But we are, we are you're just starting to see the product change to support this, right? Um, but you're, if you're using APM today, you, you can start looking at some new things like DPM in order to start bringing those worlds together.
I'd like to know, I'd like to have that conversation about how do I align myself to, to leverage what you're doing two years from now? Cause clearly that's where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've been working at it for a while and, and we still have a lot of work to go to kind of sort out specifics in each product area, but you know, the, the objective is clear. It's just, how do we get there and what does it look like until we get there? That's going to be money. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, I think we're at time. Uh, I hope this was valuable for the folks that are here. And, uh, you know, glad to do this again, Namita. And, and, sure. Uh, sure, and uh, uh, this recording will be posted on the community channel. So if you want to see it again, please, please, you can access that from the community channel. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Doran. And everybody who joined our call today, thanks a lot for joining and asking good questions. See you again in the next office hour. Till then, bye. Thank you. Thanks so bye. much. Thank you. Thank you.